breaking some new boundaries. Um, Sarah's got a great background, having worked in New Zealand for 10 years and worked for some of the really big companies such as Vodafone. Um, so a, a brilliant background. Um, new to Agile last year, I think you were at the conference here just last year. Uh, uh, yes. And, um, so I've done Agile for lots of years. You've done Agile for lots of years, but came to the conference last year. And we're delighted that Sarah's going to um, share some of her experience with us this afternoon. So um, let's give her a warm welcome. company called Sullivan Cuff, about 30 people strong, and we make medical software that's deployed in around 2,000 GPs and hospitals throughout the UK. Um, so last year, quite a few people from my company came to Agile on the Beach, and we met a guy called Jeff Brantley, who talked to us about innovation games, and we read the book. <laughs> and since then, we've been using these games, both internally and with our customers, um, to try and help us um, decide what features we should put in our product. And they've actually proved really useful. So this session is just to give you some ideas and enable you to play a couple of those games so you can see how you might use them within your own companies. So it's not going to be a lot of me talking, five minutes of background, and then we're going to split into groups and play some games. So we're going to play two games um, and we're going to be constrained by time, so 10 to 15 minutes a game and usually a game would probably take about an hour, so don't expect to finish the game and I'll have to stop you and we'll have to keep on track. Um, and then I'll just outline a couple more games um, just to give you an idea of what's out there and we'll wrap up. So how can games help? Um, there's lots of different games and they all help in different ways. but we found that they really helped us make meetings more effective. Um, they helped us, we had groups who were trying to make decisions about what features should go in our product. Um, and they really helped that group decision making process. Um, they generate ideas, they're fun, they make work more enjoyable. Um, and we also use them to go out and talk to our customers and try and understand our customers better and what value they saw in our product. Who should use them? Um, I don't think they're not a development thing, they're not a product management thing. You know, I think it's the idea is just to get an understanding of what games there are, have them in your back pocket, and use them when appropriate. So we've used them in the development team, we've used them with our customers. Um, there's no sort of rules. <laughs> Why do they work? I'm not really sure why they work. I believe there is a lot of research in this area, which I haven't read. <laughs> but I think there's something about the idea of playing a game. There's a clear objective and there's a set of rules. And everyone understands that. And everyone is trying to get you know, to the objective. And the moment you say it's a game, you know, it has that sort of atmosphere of informality and being fun and relaxed. And they're very visual. So you can often see how far you are towards your goal visually. And I think that really helps. And standing up always helps as well. You know, meetings where everyone sits around in the room, sort of slowly wishing they were somewhere else. <laughs> you know, they can really help improve that. So that was the preamble, by the way, very quick. So this is, these are the first game we're going to play is called Prune the Tree. And these are a picture, two pictures of some of the trees that we've used. So when we have we have a big area of functionality coming up and it comes off the roadmap and we think, okay, we've got to put this piece of functionality into our product. And what we were doing, we were having you know, a meeting with a spreadsheet with a big list of user stories in and we would sit down and go, okay, what does everyone think? Is this in the first release? Is this in the second release? And it would just take an awful long time and it was quite draining <laughs> and not much fun. So we decided to try um, the Prune the Tree game. So on the right, this is one of our trees. We had to do a sort of appointments system. An appointment system could mean anything. You, know, you don't want to rewrite half of the Outlook calendar stuff. So what I did is, the game's very simple. You just draw a tree, and then each leaf represents a snippet of functionality. So it's like a user story. So for the appointment system, some of these leaves are just make an appointment, delete an appointment. And so you start off at the meeting with all the leaves around the edge of the tree. And then, as a group, you pick up a leaf and you decide where it's going to go. And the tree has several canopies 
if you like. So the inner ring here, that's what's the core cool stuff, the minimum you could release to get a working product to your customer. And so the, the core, you know, the things that you really need go in that inner layer, and then you can have outer canopies. And things that you don't think you're ever going to do, you just put the leaves on the ground. And then we kind of got a bit more advanced with our trees, and we split up them into areas. So you might have, for example, you, know, you don't want to forget about the reporting bit of your product. So you can have sort of areas of a tree or branches, and, um, and that helps to ensure that you've got some good spread of functionality, you, know, you haven't forgotten or neglected a particular area. And by the way, the way I played the games isn't necessarily the same as what you read in the book or on the website. I really think the idea is just to take what's out there and adapt it to you know, what works for you. So we're going to play this game now. So you can see around the room there's quite a few trees. So in a second I'm going to ask you to get into groups, preferably five, five or six to a tree. Um, and the scenario you'll be working with is I'm the game organiser and I work for a small clothing company um, which is about to launch a new website selling um, our clothes online for the first time. So I need the game players, who are the stakeholders in the company, the key stakeholders, I need them all to agree what should be in the first release of that website. So I need you to get into groups of five or six, find a tree, when we get to your tree, you'll see a little set of sticky labels. The left-hand column through the tree, you need to each just give yourself a goal. So someone needs to pretend they're from marketing, someone's going to be from customer services, a sales manager, you know, just pick a goal. Okay? And then you need to, as a group, go around and look at all the things that could be on your website, for example, online catalogue, probably pretty useful if you're going to be selling clothes online. <laughs> So you might consider that so important that it needs to go in the first iteration. So you might put that in the middle. Okay? And so we're going to have about 10 minutes to play this game. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, we're going to have to keep moving because we won't get time to play the next game. So, but that was good, everyone got into it, but it was quite interesting. Some people have loads of leaves in the middle right away. That over there, you know, you're a good. <laughs> Only got a few leaves in. Um, okay, so the next game we're going to look at is called Buy a Feature. Um, and this is a game that we played internally to start with, and then we went out and played it with our customers. And we were in the situation where there were some new drugs coming onto the market that we needed to support within our software, but we didn't really know, you know, there was a whole range of features that we could do, and we didn't really know what our customers wanted. And if we went and talked to our customers, they didn't really know what they wanted <laughs> either, because the drugs weren't even in widespread use yet. So they really hadn't been thinking about it. It wasn't even on their radar. So we went to play by a feature with two groups of customers, and our customers are sort of GPs, and nurses, uh, project managers, and some of the NHS commissioners who commission the services. Um, so the idea behind by a feature is that we created each of these cards represents a possible piece of functionality within our product. product. So we created a whole load of cards, and we gave each one a cost. And the amount of cost was relative to how hard we thought it would be to develop. So something on the left, you know, worth five pounds, fairly easy, fairly easy calculation. Something, you know, 120 pounds that involves interfacing with a GP's clinical system, well, that's going to be a lot of work, so that's going to cost a lot. So we prepared all these cards um, of features, and then went along and played the game. And the idea is that everyone in the game gets given a certain amount of money, each, um, and then you ask them to buy you know, the features that they think are most important to them in our, in our product. And the total cost of features um, was around £800, but they only had £400, so there's no way they can get everything. <laughs> um, and the interesting thing was not just what they ended up buying, but it's listening to them negotiate with each other about what they wanted to buy. Um, and that was where the real insight came for us, because 
then you really understand you know, the perspective of the project manager, the perspective of the GP, and you really understand what benefits they see from all these features in the product. So it was actually in listening to the conversations and analysing them afterwards when we called all the sessions where the value really came. So again, you're going to pay by a feature. So by a feature, there's all the there's actually eight purple purple card stations around the room. And you will ideally need to be in group <coughs> five, okay? So if you can try and get five to a station, that would be great. So again, you're working for the clothing company and you're about to launch an online website through which you're gonna sell your clothes. But you need to buy a new phone system for your company that's gonna enable you to you know, respond to this potentially volume of calls. So I'm the game organizer. I sell phone systems and I'm trying to find out what features my customers value most and why. So I've set up the game. So again, if you could get yourself into groups and go and find one of these groups of purple cards, there will be a little envelope on the wall. You can give yourselves money. So four people in your group will get £100 to spend. Total cost of features is £800. So you're not going to be able to get everything. Um, and again, if you could, where's the sticky label book? If you could go back to your sticky label sheet and give yourself a roll for the, the second column. Okay, so if there's more people, then that's fine. And there's a new role in this game, which is um, someone who works for a phone company, and that's an observer. Yes? Should we use the same groups or should we all mix up? Uh, up to you. Just just try and get the numbers in the spread, is what I'd say. And I went for the money to um, And so an observer is someone from the phone company, and they're just going to sit and listen to the conversations that are going on. And if all the observers could come and get <coughs> some cards and pens, and you just write down, literally, random things that you notice, okay, marketing guys having a bad day, or, you know, they really value this, this is interesting to them, things that you use, and just observations, okay? Um, does that make sense? I'll explain that okay. okay, excellent. So we'll try and do 15 minutes for this one. Um, but that will push us right to the end. So maybe actually 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, I've taken it. I've taken it. Oh, it's the same right. Yes, I can you just hear from a couple of observers? Just any comments that you wrote down? Um, okay, so IT were the quickest to identify their interests. Yes, that's good. Uh, <laughs> most of the challenges happen between IT and finance. <laughs> um, finance wanted a product that just satisfied the need but basically wasn't gold plated it just yeah. did the job um, eventually they used the Moscow method to uh, then decide what they were actually going to have and their number one priority which they all identified at the beginning was almost dropped right at the end <laughs> <laughs> excellent right. Very good. okay so we're coming at time so so yeah, we found this one really valuable, just in playing it back and listening to it, so the negotiation that was going on. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you some pictures of a couple of other games that we've used. Um, this one is called the Speedboat. I don't know if you can see my beautiful speedboat. There's a, there's a lovely speedboat at the top of the picture. So we used this one with our development team, and we were trying to find out what was holding the team back, if you like, from being more effective and doing more features and more stories like we all want to do. So this one is very, very simple and it's all just about the imagery of having this speedboat shooting away, being very efficient and very fast. And then you ask the team to identify anchors, so things that are holding it back from going as fast as it might. So the way we played this was we drew the <coughs> speedboat <coughs> on the board and then we gave everyone in the development team some post-it notes and asked them to write down things that they thought were a problem for them. And then everyone in turn went up to the board and placed the post-it note. Um, and where they placed it, so the, the bigger the problem, the, 
bigger the problem was, the nearer the bottom it went because it's like a heavy anchor and it's holding you back more. So the idea of this game isn't to identify solutions to all those problems, it's just a way of getting everyone to, you know, kind of bend and get all their, all their things out. Um, and this one is called, here we go, Remember the Future. So it's very high tech at our company, so <laughs> we've got some string <laughs> representing a timeline. So what we were trying to work out was in say, December 2015, you know, we have all the, as a company, we have these goals. We want to have this much turnover. We want to have sold this many licenses. So what features and what development resource are we going to need in order to try and get there in 2015? So what we did was just had a piece of string, literally, along the wall. Um, at the right-hand end of the string is December 2015. So to start with, we all stood in December 2015. And said, okay, we've we've met our target. You know, we have this turnover, we have this number of licenses. How did we get here? And the trick to this game is to ask the question that way round. So we say, okay, how did we get here? And then we walk back down the timeline in six month increments and say, okay, well that means that you know by May 2015 we need to have sold this many licenses. And you walk back, you know, put up licenses in the markets that we think we would have sold into by that time. And then we said, so that's all the orange and yellow sort of post-its at the top. Sorry, yes, yeah, orange and yellow. <coughs> and then we looked and we said, okay, in order to have met those targets and sold them to those mar markets, what features would our product need to have had? So all the pink stickies are features that we think we would have needed to have put into our product to have sold to that market at that point in time. So it's very simple, but quite a powerful way of doing it. And it's a lot easier than standing at the other end of the timeline going, oh my God, how do I get there? Because, you know, it just seems like a mountain. Whereas if you stand in the future and go, I'm here, I've done it. How did I get there? That's actually a lot, psychologically, a lot easier to, to deal with. <coughs> and that's it. So I hope I've given you a taster of various different types of games. There are many more. And as I say, the way we've played them isn't the same as the book, but I think that's that's the, the point of it really, is that you can just take them and adapt them. Um, so customise them, they don't have to involve lots of prep. You know, the book talks about doing it on quite a large scale sometimes, with conferences and you know, invites going out many months in advance, and you know, we haven't, we haven't necessarily used them like that. And there's a website, so thank you. <laughs> questions for Sarah so I mean absolutely fascinating it's really lovely to get stuck in and you know get a feel for how they work and I'm sure everybody's kind of working out how they can use them in their own environment but you've obviously used these very practically um, so I mean is there do we have some questions when you involve customers yes and how have you actually how do we about that? Do you bring them out to call more or what incentives are there or no. how have you chosen them yeah so we didn't go out there and say let's play a game because I think that might have thought <laughs> so we approached um Obviously, a group of customers that we had a relationship with already, um, and we said we'd like to come and talk to you about you know the new drugs and how they fit in with the product. The, um, and it would be an hour session. We threw in lunch. <laughs> That's always good for doctors and nurses. Like, away from the <laughs> surgery, lunch. Um, and then as we got sort of further down the track, we sort of said, "Oh, is it okay if we play a game in the session?" Um, and you know, you'll have to buy certain features. The thing is, we had to make very clear was that. The cost of the features wasn't related to the cost of our product. <laughs> <laughs> so we just introduced it like that, and they were actually really, um, really receptive. They got it immediately. You know, it wasn't wasn't a very hard thing. They they whizzed through it, and it was easy for them to understand. When you were choosing your groups, did you look at any optimum size, or you tried it with very size? Um, so we had, I think, groups of four and five which worked quite well. Um, I haven't tried it with larger sizes. You could. I think it's more important, not necessarily the size of the group, but the mix of people that you have in, in the room. Because for one session, you know, we probably had a few too many nurses and, and not enough of the commissioning, you know, the, the, the decision makers, the buyers. So it's more important to get a mix of the right people that you are, you are after the results from. Yeah. 
I, I thought that last game was particularly interesting in the fact that we were using sort of toy money rather than abstract story points or anything like that. The output of that game, do you then take that straight into a kind of prioritization of stories for a sprint, or is for you the more valuable output the insight you get into the kind of perspectives of the customer? I mean, how do you yes. use the output of that game? So I suppose we did provide a feature game with um, Mel, who's our marketing manager. So she, for her, understanding the benefits, you know, helps her frame the marketing message and helps her you know, understand how to sell our product to people. So the part of the output was for her. And then we played that game with a few groups and we played it internally as well to see what we thought you know, we should put in the product. And then we literally, um, we just had a big, a big whiteboard with, you know, these are the things most people wanted. And then, but in addition to that, we had the, the insights, if you like, because it, you know, it is important what they ended up buying, but also it's the insight as to what they thought was most valuable. And so we sort of had those up as well and used those to then prioritise you know, what we should do first. So it's not a straight replacement no, for the same planning session. No, I don't, well you could use it like that, but I don't think that's because you want to see, you have to balance, you need know, to balance view. Yeah. Um, the question, do you have a hypothesis on which features you thought the customers were going to pick first? Yes. Yeah, well, How rather close distressingly, was it? one group didn't want to buy any. <laughs> 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 so that was it. Second okay. question, did you, have a control, did you have a control group where you didn't use the games with them, but did it in the traditional fashions and compared the results? No, we're not. No. Did you wait the options? So when you presented them, did you wait on your priorities or how easy they were to develop? No, no they, they, so the cost of the feature was related to how hard we thought it was to develop. So we, we listed out all the features and said this one's harder than that one, probably twice as hard, <coughs> so that would cost twice as much. Um, you know, it's a very rough way of doing it, but it's something. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and then part of it, I was just going to ask about the difference between what your teams were coming up with in terms of priorities and your customers, because that tells you a lot yes. about how close yeah, yeah. you are to your customers and how much you know. Yes. Um, when we played it internally, there was, our customers both chose the same really expensive feature, which is about integrating with their the system, and internally we can prioritise that as high. So yeah, it, that was quite interesting, but there were some things that we were you know, quite, quite way out of. In terms of, there's what there's, I think there's a dozen games in there. Isn't it? Yeah. Have you have you started thinking about how they <coughs> fit together and orders and are you beginning to? Because um, it's quite interesting how how yeah, they, how couple, they fit together. Yeah, there's a couple together. that I haven't, I haven't thought about how they fit together, but there's, a, there's definitely another couple. The spines where I wanted to quite like to play. Yeah. Um, anyway, there's, a, there's one called Product Box, which apparently is quite good. We don't have a physical product, so I don't know no, well that's, whether you the, can play that without yeah. having a physical product. I don't know. No, no, it's actually. Have you, yeah, I've done it. We've done, done it, yes. and I've, yeah. I've used it. And the the yeah. whole point is to take something that is, um, and for those people, you, you essentially build a box and you you put all the features on it, you know, you use magazines, and but the whole point is to turn a non-physical uh, entity in to articulate it through a physical product. Right. It's very good. Yes. You know, but it's an interesting when you start looking about in terms of how they might work together. Right. You know, because in some respects, the back, the remembering the future is the visioning things and. So they do kind of fit together. Yes. There isn't much in the book about how you might link them together, which order you yeah, do. Yeah. Mm. Yes, no, I tend to just think, oh, I've got this problem coming. Yeah. Is anything, any of these to help? <laughs> we, we've certainly done some similar stuff virtually using things like Lino It, and, right. and where you've got customers that are different <coughs> as well, right. okay. which are essentially just virtual sticky things that you can use, okay. as long as you've got relationships. Two more questions, I think. <coughs> something called the retro mat. Um, it's for running retrospectives with teams rather than going out to customers, which I've not tried. And it runs through a sequence of setting the scene, gathering data, deciding what to do, closing it. Um, and you just press a button, it comes up with a sequence of games. Um, I used um, Run the Future yep. in the last couple of weeks, and then from that, we springboarded to making commitments to each other within the team based on us getting to this positive frame of mind of, didn't we do great because we got the process really in check? Okay guys, how are we going to get that process really in check? And it just, we just churned out a list that long. Right? So if I'd just gone into the team and said, can you give me a list of things we're going to do? They'd have all just gone, 
for this, we did last night, but it, it just really helped spring the day because it was fun, it was relaxed, and we had a bit of joke with us. Yeah, it really worked. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. One more question? Over the, over the back, hello. Hello. Um, so, you've seen a bit of action in the games from the book. Yes. Um, have you tried any variants that didn't come off as you expected, or have you tried any variants that were like surprisingly successful? You know, with this little tweak and this amazing thing about it. Um, I was just surprised by, I was actually really surprised just by how well treated the treatment works. Really? Because I, I, I was really surprised, you know, because you wouldn't think it's not that complicated, and essentially you're just prioritising stuff. But it's, I think it's the whole the whole game just surprised me by how well they actually worked, and it just people standing up, I think, um, and you know, having that visual imagery for some reason really worked, and I'm just surprised by the whole that whole idea, you know, that it, that it does do so well. So I don't think there were any. By feature, I think I definitely have to practice internally because that's quite tricky just to get, you know, the number of, make sure you've not got too much money, you haven't got too little, that the features are priced right. So I think that's definitely a game that you need to try. If you're going to do it with your hospitals, you need to try it out. Um, it's just a lot of more planning. Um, so the first iteration of that didn't go, you know, I had lots and lots of feedback from how to do it better. <laughs> and then we um, did it with customers and, and that worked fine. So you do like the internal dry run first? Yes, so definitely. Yes, because my first bit concerns that we go out and all our customers would think that our features are like five pounds. Brilliant. Well, th uh, I think another great big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.